Cleaning Nation. This is part one in a two-part episode. Stay tuned for the next episode for part two. Enjoy. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion. Uh, I just had a weird pause because I'm pretty sure this is Claire Montgomery, but I just I always call her Claire. So I'm like, um, anyway, your last name is Montgomery, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. I've known Claire for, gosh, feels like a couple of years now. And um, I just realized this might be the first time I've ever said her name, her last name out loud. <laughs> When I start recording, I'm like, hey, this is Claire. And I'm like, they're probably going to want a last name. I'm about 90% sure it's Montgomery. And I, was I thought terrifying. you were going to say Claire Bear. So, which would have yeah, been. Yeah, I always call Claire. Claire. Yeah, <laughs> I assumed your last name was Bear. <laughs> but your husband's name isn't Mr. Bear. So, I'm assuming oh. Montgomery is probably the right, the right way to go. And I have gotten to meet um, Claire's husband, who's a very sweet man. Um, anyway, this is Claire Bear uh, to all of us who know and love her, or Claire Montgomery for those of us who uh, are going to pretend to be pr professional. Anyway, Claire owns a beautiful residential cleaning company, Brilliant Spaces. Um, the re one of the many reasons I want to have her on is she is probably one of the more similar to how I think people in the world. Like we're both nerds in the same. We're both kind of. So if you don't like me, you might want to just pass this whole podcast because Claire's a little bit of a female version. So if you're like, oh, pain in the butt. Well, this is doubling down. Like when we get Suzanne, it's like, oh, the opposite of Mike. I can enjoy two sides. This is if you just like Mike, you're like, this is your podcast because it's Mike and uh, I don't say the female version, but um, a very similar friend. Although and Canadian. So that's, you know, rarely do I associate myself so closely with a Canadian, but here we are. So anyway, I'll let Claire give her own story, but I just wanted to share her story because I think a lot of you will resonate with her. And when she kind of shares what she did, um, I, I really believe that's going to bring value for those of you can, that want to be where she's at and maybe are starting where she started and go, well, if I did what she did, I can get those same results. So that said, let's start because I've i known you so long. I honest to goodness, Claire, have no idea what your life was like or where you were. We started. I've completely forgotten that person. I'm so in tune with this, Claire. So I will listen along with the audience. <laughs> if you don't mind giving us an overview of how long ago we did meet, because it feels like two years, but I could be full of crap. And um, just what your business and your life as it relates to the business felt and looked like uh, kind of up until before we we talked. Yeah. So uh, we met about a year and a half ago. And at that point, give or take a year. So I was, in, I was in business for 11 or 12 years at that point. So I had been in business for a long time. Um, I'm very, very uh, stubborn. So I didn't, I really grew the business organically through word of mouth and just through working really, really gosh darn hard. And then uh, COVID was a little bit of a wake up call. Like it, it, like we operated through COVID, like that was okay, but I kind of got out of COVID a little bit burnt out and realized, man, like I'm working way too many hours and not profiting and I haven't given myself a raise and I don't remember when. And um, I remember Terry and I, and my husband and I had sat down and had a conversation around like, this just isn't sustainable. Like your quality of life isn't sustainable. Financially, this isn't sustainable. So whatever I'm doing is not working. And I had reached, uh, I had worked with a coach in the past, um, but not industry specific. So while they gave me really good tools, um, there was no um, direct tactical advice on, hey, like, I understand the sales or the service-based industry. Um, here are some actual, like, tactical action items and ways to structure your business that will kind of get you to that next level. So we just had decided, you know, this isn't working and it's not going to work. And if we don't get um, some kind of support, um, it really, you know, we're probably not gonna be here in five years or we'll still be here and it'll be like why are we here like this is this hasn't been worth pushing through so yeah that's kind of where i was starting with when we first met all right that leads me to a question and a rare compliment to my friend claire so if i'm going to do it i'll do it in front of a microphone recorded so she'll always have it and when i bust her chops she'll be like i have it on recording you say nice things and i know you meant it so we'll start with the question and i suppose i'll get to the compliment um question when you said you're working a ton of hours that means different things to different people like what would hour wise for you? What did that oh, mean? Um, uh, a lot. Like I was, I, I had hired an assistant manager to alleviate um, some of the stuff. So uh, that was helpful. But I would say I was still working like 60 hours a week. I was working like 80 plus during COVID, I hired an assistant manager, and then I was probably somewhere around 60. Um, but I was doing all of the things. So our assistant manager was a huge help. 
but we quickly identified like, hey, this isn't working. Like she's basically a mini business owner running around like crazy. Um, I'm still doing tasks that I shouldn't be doing. Um, and so we weren't really growing, still weren't profiting. Um, so yeah, I was still working like s stupid hours and she- so 80 on the high end, 60 on the low end, depending on pre or post, what kind of support you'd gotten yourself. Yeah, out. yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, was, I wasn't even working like full time. I was working like more full time and I didn't have, I was reacting to the business. So it's kind of like I was giving, giving myself up to whatever hours the business needed to lend me. And so um, there wasn't, yeah, it wasn't very predictable. And I didn't have designated time where I was uh, like um, not working or not available to work, I should say. Which makes it hard when you have another human in your life who's like, hey, man. I'm not a business owner. Yeah. You know, Harry's got a job. I kind of come home at five or whatever his deal is. Just open the wife who I love would be around. You're like, ah, just after this call or after like, just give me a second. I'm sure, you know, for the spouse that can be less, less fun. We'll just put it that way. Okay. Thank you for that. Cause I think there's two frustrations. The sheer number of hours ain't great, but you said something I resonate with, which is the unpredictability of the hours. I don't like, like I'd almost rather work 50 hours. I can pick and choose than 30 that, someone else tells me when and it's last minute, it's always chaos. I'm like, oh, yeah. that makes me sick. Cause you can't plant, you can't go on a vacation. You just can't do anything. Cause like, well, I gotta be, you know, I'm on call to my business. So thank you for that. I think that'll help others just as, as we share your story, the compliments I'll give, um, and it pains me, but gosh darn it, it's the tr truth. Um, it's funny as a coach, most of the time when I hear people say, oh, I had some coaching. Cause you know, there's not, I, I'm sure some people are just scams or don't know what they're doing, but I think wholly, especially smart people, pick people that know what they're doing. So when they don't get results, my um, knee jerk inside, I try not to say it with my outside voice, is, um, well, they, you probably didn't do what they asked you to do, right? You probably didn't implement. Claire is one of the few people, because we worked with thousands, um, girlfriend implements. So <laughs> with you or you were one of the few people like, no, it wasn't. And again, I don't know, that, whatever, I'm not, I'm sure he or she or they were fine coaches, but um you're one of the few people I'm like, well, the problem wasn't the implementation because that's just either that or Claire is a completely different human than when, than she is now. So um, I, that's one of my favorite things about Claire is a lot of people in our group look at her and be like, how do you do that? And, you know, she's smart. She shares. But I think the underlying theme, and correct me, I don't want to put words in your mouth, is, yeah, well, I do the things that we're supposed to do and <laughs> that I get the results we're supposed to get. And they're like, oh, I should try that. I should try the yeah, doings. I think um, I will say I'm a very in a good way, um, a very different person than I was before coaching, um, in the sense that I'm actually, uh, not a very good, I don't, I'm not very good at taking, or sorry, I should, this mindset moment, I was not very good at taking action. So I think the big push for me and the mindset shift was, um, in starting coaching was that it's like, Hey, I, like I came here to get results. I need to be humble enough to know that I don't know how to get there. Um, and in, imperfect action trumps inaction. Mm. So like I'm a perfectionist and previously, um, cause I'm a new person now, uh, previously would like, I wouldn't make changes unless everything was lined up. And part of what I tried to give up when I started coaching was like, Hey, like you got all the help in the world. You just have to start doing stuff and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but you're not going to get anywhere if you don't take one step um, uh, at a time type thing. So it's funny that you say that. And it's funny that uh, some of the compliments that I get, because um, I know Claire three, four, five years ago, I know Claire during COVID. And it's just like, man, there's a big, there's been a big uh, shift in who I used to be. So it's funny. I was joking. I'm like, unless you're a completely different person, like, well, that's probably, I'm not about completely, but there is some of today. Claire is a different person. Um, and it's so funny. Like I said, even when we started, if you were less action oriented or kind of implementation oriented, I can't even recall that. Even now that you're saying it, I'm like, I came up, Oh yeah, I do remember you being kind of a pain in the butt. Like, no, I just, I'm sure you were, if you say you were, I just don't recall it. And to be, when we're talking pain in the butt, Claire probably, ask the most or top quadrant, top 10% of question askers. So that goes hand in hand. And I'll tell you, it's funny when you talk about the perfections, Claire, one of the most devastating questions posed to me was by a coach, uh, a good friend of mine now, but he was my friend and my coach back then, um, said, are you, uh, you know, something came up where I made the statement you made, I'm a perfectionist. 
and uh, hit me right in the head with, how's that working for you? And I started with explaining yeah. how great it was because it's like, I'm a perfectionist. All the mere mortals below me do everything half ass, whereas I go full into this thing like a god dang professional. So I started explaining that and then I'm like, not well. <laughs> I started explaining how well I was working, but then he asked me, forget the, the exact sequence of questions, but he forced me to kind of be a little more specific. And I realized not only was it working poorly for me, for my business, for those around me, for those I loved, not great. So uh, feel free if you're ever get too proud and go, how's that working for you? And if the answer ain't great, maybe uh, maybe take a different path. Hey, Clean Nation, Mike Campion here. One of my least favorite things about these podcasts are we found that people love the show and they love the information, but when I talk to you guys in person, stuff doesn't get done. People love the podcast, but they don't take any action. If you'd like to actually implement this and get this done in your world, we have a whole team of people that do exactly that. If you go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk, you can book a time with either myself personally or one of our teammates to at least help you come up with a plan to actually implement and change your life. So if you want to go from getting these good ideas in your head to getting in your life, just book a free call with myself or my team, growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. And we can go from this one to many format to one to one and really get you some results. Excited to talk. So usually we'd move right into kind of how Claire's doing now. And most importantly for you guys, um, what she did different. So you guys can say, well, and gals, maybe I'll do some of those things that Claire's doing if I want some of the results that Claire's getting. Um, but this Claire is one of the very few people that is on the podcast that I actually personally got to uh, enroll and recall uh, that conversation because I happened to be, I still remember the hotel room. Um, it was my wife's birthday, I think. We were in Mill Valley where she grew up in Northern California. And she was being, I had nothing, I, had, I think I had two or three days off. I don't know how Claire, for some reason, you were the one thing on my calendar. It's not like I had a bunch of stuff to do. I don't know what you were doing on my calendar, but somehow... All I recall is two or three days off, not Claire. I had my calendar. So I'm in this thing. And I think my wife was gone. And um, I don't know what it was about her, her and her husband was on. We're on the, the phone. Now I'm going to share my perspective. And then you can tell me I'm full of crap and say or whatever. You, I would love to hear, you You know, you, you can, your remembrance doesn't have to line up with mine. And um, so funny because she was, I don't know if it's her or husband or both. I, I don't really recall it, but there, there's a lot of fear going on. Like, I don't know. We're not sure. I don't want to go forward. Like, we're just going to think about it or go slow. And having done this enough times, I knew that if they just thought about it, they would find like, again, no offense. We're pretty good on cus customers. So it's not like I needed her to make my payroll or something. Um, but I just knew she wasn't going to do anything, right? If she was like, oh, I've got a different coach and I knew the coach it was a good coach and I'm going to talk to him. That would all would have been fine. No, no busting of chops for Claire or her husband, but it was just, basically and she said exactly what she said to me like it's not working we're gonna be out of business i can't go like this i'm like well this will work let's do this and do you believe it'll work yeah i believe it'll work good let's get going no no no, no. we gotta stop and i was just so god dang angry <laughs> i'm trying not to be a shit or a butt and i'm sure i was a butt I'm sure i was both of those things uh, and claire can tell you from her perspective um and probably terry's as well but i just remember fighting so gosh darn hard for you guys and i was in this spot of like i'm not trying to sell you a high pressure make you feel like any of that weirdness but i was also just furious because you're the type of person I hung up the phone got in Natalie my wife and Claire and her husband we've all spent time and a little bit of time together and just been screaming it not screaming at Natalie like in anger but like this freaking couple like just, it just went ruin my own goddamn it's just fighting for her because I'm like I know she's never gonna get anything right she's gonna go off and die and um it was an uncomfortable from I remember you can tell me different it was a pretty uncomfortable conversation and I just now with the relationship we have now and I know Terry and he's <laughs> hopefully okay with me being a kind of a butt. Um, I'm like, I'm really glad I fought for them because it would have been much easier just like, okay, okay, think about it. And they would have gone and done nothing. And who knows if they, who knows, I'll let her tell what she thinks would happen. So um, A, for all of you guys and gals out there in any sort of selling position, if you're trying to manipulate them to do what you want, because you need it, that can be a little gross. And I wouldn't advocate that. Like I wasn't, and I'm sure 10% was pride. I'm like, you try and not enroll on my call. I'm like, the heck with that. But there was no, I need your, your, your money, right? It was just frustration that I know I can help. So I want to encourage you guys. And now looking back, I think of that periodically. Cause when I, every time I see you win, I'm like, what if I would have just been done the easy way, which maybe Claire and Preston would have liked me better and just like, yeah, yeah. Think about it. I get it. That makes a bunch of sense. Blah, blah, blah as opposed to being, you know, went Canadian and been nice about it, <laughs> went full American and be like, you're full of crap. You know it. I know it. Now let's get you to gut dang work. So that long, boring story was my um, recollection. I would love to hear yours. And then we'll, this is kind of just for fun. And then we'll talk about what you've done differently and, and see if we can give some value. 
Um, it's funny because I think about that call a lot. We had to reset the call. It got so bad and so tense <laughs> that we actually we actually had to reset it and start from the beginning. Like we you all guys reset just, it or I reset it. You Wait, reset it. Reset? You reset it, and we all had to agree that we were just going to literally reset the call. I've never done that in a call that because because it was so uh, tense. Like Terry and I came in there. Or more so me, but like I, like I said, I'm a recovering perfectionist. So I came in wanting all of the information, wanting to know price, like what are the steps? What am I going to be doing? Like I needed everything laid out so that I could make a decision. And I had never had, like I had never had anybody just focus on, well, do you want the change? Like the only deciding factor is whether or not you think you need the help and whether or not, um, like what the consequence would be of not just having a little bit of faith and getting some help. And I, I think I was so unfamiliar with that um, method of sale, but also just that relationship of like, Hey, like we just have to be in this together. Like you got to trust that I have some processes and you know, I got to trust that you're willing to do the work to get the results. So, um, and Terry thought you were just such a big jerk. He was like, man, this is like, this I'm is so really sorry, like Terry. rough. If you're and, listening to this, Terry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. But I, I think we're so used to like the the typical sales tactic that I think um, we immediately thought like, oh, there's some kind of catch. Like this is a sales tactic. There's something that like Mike's not alluding to. We need to get more information. And I think it just came down to us um, having some clarity on like, yeah, we just have to trust that it'll, uh, we just have to trust that this is the first step to take and mm -hmm. that you have our, our, our best interest. And that most importantly, um, whatever we're like, what we were dealing with wasn't working. So it's like, what do we do? Not sign up for coaching and then just continue on our merry way. So I remember committing to that call really like committing to signing up for coaching really apprehensively. And then I, I like, we laugh about it now, but I literally spent like two days, like, yeah. Oh, I was like crying and I was like, so, I that makes me I feel terrible. so uh, no, no, I was just so distraught. Cause I was like, what, what happens if this doesn't work? Like, what have I committed to? And, uh, Terry, who's amazing, just said, Claire, like, it'll be fine. Like if it ends up being crappy coaching, which obviously it wasn't, you've, you've, you've taken the first step. Like you've tried something and we just need to try That's something. And he was just like, nope, it'll be fine. You're you're a committed, hardworking person, and this doesn't doesn't work out. It's okay. Like that's that. I think me getting in my own way with that perfectionist mindset of, hey, I know this needs. Like I need to know that this will work. And he was very encouraging in that. Like, no, you don't need to know 100 percent that it'll work, but you need to know that you're gonna try something different. Um, and so, yeah, like I really, uh, I'm very grateful that you fought really hard for us on that call and that you didn't, now that I, I know a little bit more about sales, that you didn't sway from that process. Cause I think it developed a lot more trust in, in me committing myself to coaching, but also just knowing like, no, like this is these, these people have my best interest at heart. Yeah. It's like the first day you got to make this to yourself. And if yeah, yeah, totally. So if I would have gotten weak and be like, yeah, I guess you should think about it. You do need to be a perfectionist. And what you need now is more data. And, you know, Claire, I don't know this, but I'm going to guess and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Claire had done her research. She did not come to this call with like, never heard of you. Don't know what's going on. Haven't thought this through to the nth degree. Like she probably which doesn't. Is, which ahead. is funny. Oh, I was going to say, that's why this is so, it's so funny to me how everything came about. Because I hadn't done any research. Never heard a podcast. Didn't read your wow, book. That you I didn't know. No, like nothing, which is very unlike me. Yeah. Um, but I think that that was meant to be, I think it was meant to be that I just knew that I needed help and that I had seen this ad pop up multiple times. I knew that I needed some kind of coaching. And so I think it was, um, I think I was kind of maybe in a way being protected from that a little bit in not having all of the information. And I think you said it really well, like we're not making, like, you're not making the sale to us first. Like I had to, I had to make that sale to myself. And I think that's what was scary about it was, um, I'm doing that to myself. I'm committing to myself. And that, um, that's like almost more scary than committing to someone else, um, as a business owner. Yeah, I love that. Man, I'm, I'm really glad we had this conversation. 
for selfishly, but let me distill down a couple of value points for listeners. And I promise we'll get onto what you've done differently. And, you know, so we can give like that kind of value, but the cool thing for all of you guys and gals listening, there's really two things you can take out of this one from the buyer side, which is why I love being able to, you know, usually sometimes the person will remember the call or I'll remember the call, but rarely do we have both, especially so long ago, right? Like this is a year and a half ago. It's one of the few calls for some reason we, anyway, it's, it, I'm, this is, this is great. So I'll give you my thoughts from the buyer side, my thought from the seller side, and then Claire, you can add anything and we'll, we'll get to kind of what you've done differently. So from the buyer side, I want to encourage you guys, first of all, you buy how you sell, right? So a lot of people that I rarely get anywhere, like, can you give me a discount? Like pff, one in a hundred if that, and mostly I laugh and they laugh and we know that's a silly thing. Um, but when I was younger, oh, and by the way, when I buy things, when the point being, when you buy it, you buy how you sell. If I think it's worth it, I buy it. If I don't, I don't. Never ask for a discount. Never, never, never. I'm the jerk that goes to Mexico and, you know, there's this poor guy who I'm a billionaire to and, you know, he's trying to sell something over that's worth a buck for $20 and I could grind him down. Like I got him down to $6 and, you know, chintz them. I give him the 20 got dang dollars. Not for him, for me, right? Or I don't buy it. It's fine. You know, feel, again, that we're getting a little kind of judgy, but, you know, for all of you guys out there negotiating with people that are in poverty, just give them the god dang money and let them think that they want and let them win for crying out loud. But let's just say car deal. I had a car dealership and um, I'd done this buying cars. I'm done the selling cars. I just pay. I go to the the, the guy and I'm like, I'm going to well, actually we have a Tesla and it's all prices. But before that, um, I would just tell the salesperson, hey, I'm a good client. I have money. <laughs> I'll write a check. I'm the easiest guy in the world. If you screw me, I'll probably go somewhere else. If you give me a fair deal, I'll take it. That's my full negotiation. And if they give me the full price and I like the guy, guess what? I'll just pay it. And might I get screwed by 1800 bucks? Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? I'll never know, but it doesn't bother me at all. Um, when I come back and ask for service, do I get treated like a, like pretty dang good? Yes, I do. <laughs> and is that what I'm looking for? Yes, it is. Actually, um, I'll give one more story and then we'll get to the the seller side. But you buy how you sell. Um, I, don't, you, I don't know if you were in the program at the same time as Bob and Terry Smith, such sweet human beings. Um, some of my millionaire mastermind clients told me, you should check the check. Like when you check the check at a restaurant, they overcharge you for stuff like 90% of the time. And I was like, that doesn't seem right. I'm not putting up with that crap. So I started checking the check. You know what? They were right. <laughs> and I remember being in an event with them at this restaurant I loved. I probably spent 10 grand at that restaurant. And I did an event there. Like we were there quite a bit. It's a very nice restaurant. Mastro's. If you haven't been to Mastro's and there's one in your area, go check out Mastro's. It's not cheap, but it's great. Um, and I checked the thing. And I don't know what Cokes are there. Four bucks or whatever. And they charge us for two Diet Cokes. Eight bucks. Plus tip and tip. Ten bucks all. Whatever. I don't know what it was, but it it wasn't going to change my financial situation and they overcharged us. And I was so frustrated and so not angry, just like, God, because they told me and there it was, and they took it off. There wasn't even a big fight, but the whole, I won't say the night was ruined, but it was dampened. <laughs> I didn't learn my lesson. So I kept checking for another week after that and finding out. And every time I'm like, Hey, this isn't it. And they take it off and blah, blah, blah. And I'll be, you know what? It's just worth the 12 bucks. They have a nice dinner. I just stopped checking and I'm sure I overpay by 7%. But the point being, when I sell to Claire, girlfriend, it's not about the money. It's not about the fear. Either you need help and you're going to come get it or you're not. And if you don't, you're just going to be miserable. And that's a risk that you want to take. Go take that. Or you're going to spend some money, trust someone else, and maybe it goes bad. That's a different risk, but there is no risk-free option. And I can say that all the way down to my bones because I'm like, I'll just pay for the BMW. I'll just pay for the two Cokes. It's more important to me to have the experience that I want than to get all uptight about the details. So when you start buying with, you're going to give me a discount. I want every nickel. Da, da, da. Guess what happens when you start giving prices? You need a discount. Give me a discount. <laughs> I used to get that when I was young. You know how much I get that now? None. Because it's silly to me. Like, listen, either this can change your life for a ton of money, whether it's cleaning or coaching, whatever you're selling, um, or can't. And if it can't, best of luck. And if it can does it really matter if it's $420 a month or 396 bucks a month? Either this is what you need or it's not. If it is, let's get you the help. If it's not, let's part friends. And when you really believe that all the way down, you'd be shocked at how well you sell. So that's on the buyer side. Start buying the way that you'd like to sell, right? So if you're on a coaching call and you might like to be more decisive and you like to be whatever, and if the guy's full of crap, just say, I think you're full of crap. I love you, but I'm going to pass. Fine. Or if uh, you think it's right, be like, you know what? Old Claire, old Mike would have fought and fussed and I got to have every gut dang thing. And guess what? Claire could have gotten all of her little ducks in a row and there'd still be more ducks out of a row. <laughs> it could have gone on forever. And God bless you for, for your own self, not for me, just to go, yeah, this is what I need. And I know it's scary. And again, that's not how I make decisions. Yeah, 
And how the, you're making decisions got you here, didn't it? So maybe we should try making decisions a little goddamn differently. <laughs> you like some different results. All right, there. Hey, Cleaning Nation, if you dug the content you just got, we don't do any ads and I don't sell anything on this podcast, but if you would just subscribe, rate, and review, it would be huge and I'd be so appreciative. Not only is it gonna help me, but you'll help other owners of cleaning companies across the world work less, make more, and get profitable. So if you appreciate the value we give, again, subscribe, rate, and review. It would mean the world to me. I'd really appreciate it. And we sure appreciate your time and attention.